Well, good afternoon, evening, whenever morning the heck you see this, and welcome to the weekly OTRS Central Q&A video. First time ever checking out this channel, smash that subscribe button. Or if you've checked out videos on this channel and you actually kind of like them, and you haven't smashed that subscribe button, I don't know what the heck you're waiting for, so just subscribe! And follow the channel on Twitter at OTR Central is the Twitter handle because that is currently where I take these weekly Q&A questions from. Uh, depending on the length of this, it may end up being a one-part Q&A and maybe a two-part Q&A video because I get enough questions where I want to be able to actually spend some time to actually answer the questions when possible. So we will see how stuff goes. In the meantime, with this damn fly, I got one fly that's been buzzing around this damn house all morning. I'm going to get this sea sucker at some point in time. Swear to God. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do like that, and it's going to be, oh! Anyways, let's begin, shall we? James Forkham kicks us off by asking, why do people lie and say Roman Reigns is a heel? Um, Because they're easily susceptible to uh, the lies of the mainstream wrestling media, uh, because they cannot think for themselves, and they continue to go on this unabashed Roman Reigns hate tour, which is totally and completely unmerited, unwarranted, and unjustified. That's why. They can't understand the truth that has been so eloquently and clearly laid out in front of them, and I have talked about for weeks and weeks now. People sometimes just want to be different. They want to be counterculture, if you will. They think it's the cool thing to do. Roman Reigns is a babyface, not a heel, and you can't prove me wrong because you know, hashtag Schleg Daddy is right. Volfan0531, if Roman versus Rock happens at WrestleMania, what should WWE do with Brock if he comes back? I don't know. Have him go after Drew McIntyre, you can maybe do that. You could also send them at Roman. And that to happen at WrestleMania season could be SummerSlam season next year. Like, uh, Roman's got some unfinished business, so let's do that. Because you got the Heyman angle there, like, be very interesting stuff, especially Brock coming back as the avenging heel. And again, I emphasize the mad avenging heel, because Roman is clearly established as a babyface here. Um, I don't know what the heck this name is. MC Attic Illink. I think I have totally butchered the name when I typed it down or whatever, so my apologies. If I just am not reading, and forgive me here. Uh, do you think the Tribal Chief could become a movie star after he's done with wrestling like John Cena or The Rock? I mean, he has a lot of charisma. This character turn and him actually finally truly becoming a babyface is what will make him a crap ton of money in Hollywood someday. Like he's Jason Momoa, dot, 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 but better. Let me repeat that for the haters. He is like Jason Momoa. Dot, 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 dot. But better! This is totally, to me, a long-term play to get him more opportunities in the movies. It's coming. It's just a matter of time. The Ramble WWE asked, Hey, if you could date any current WWE female superstar or broadcaster, who would that be? That, and I think you put something in there, uh, Stephen, about... Um, doesn't matter if they're married or not or anything like that. I think that is a really fascinating question. Um, you know, like the easy answer to me would be Naomi. I guess the easy answer. But it's kind of... Maybe a Selena Vega. Like, there are certainly options there. Um, I don't know, though. I don't know if I would want to date any of them. Like, really? And, and to be completely honest with you, like at this stage of my life, like I have to be realistic. Like relationships that I have had with women over the years have not ended very well for me. And, and as easy as it is, you know, to do the typical kind of insecure human thing, and that's just blame everybody else for the problem. At the end of the day, it's my fault. You know, even if they did, and when they did, you know, like really dumb, bad stuff, um, you know, I keep... Attracting myself or getting attracted to the wrong types of people that don't have the right types of things. So, you know, like, I just, I just not, not even something I would really think about or entertain at this particular moment, even if it was possible, which it's not. I mean, let's be realistic. Like, all of a sudden, some lady 
superstar in WWE is going to take a look at me at 39 and be like, oh, man, that's what I want in between my legs. I ain't doing that. It just is what it is. Um, took all that other bullshit aside, it, it probably would be Naomi. Like, it would be immediately to the getting pregnant stage. First day, you know, that type of stuff. BW Roses, do you think Andrew Yang will still have to go after Vince McMahon, even if Biden doesn't win the election? I mean, if Biden doesn't win the election and Yang's not like Secretary of Labor or something in that uh, administration in that cabinet, uh, then the, what power would he really have? Like, it's not about politics, it's about power. He would have no leverage here. Um, do I think he would certainly entertain going after them? especially if Biden won and he was part of the administration. Oh, absolutely. I have no question about that. No doubt in my mind. Do I think he will try to raise awareness on it and try to lobby if Biden doesn't win the election? Perhaps. But again, how much is that really going to matter? Um, but I certainly could see right now, you know, the play for him. He would be one of his options, one of his uh, desired paths. Andreas underscore Byron, should the Road Warriors have faced the Brothers of Destruction at a WrestleMania? I think it would have been cool if they did, but it doesn't, like, break my heart that they didn't, if that makes sense. Rick Styles, 1985, what are your overall thoughts on backstage politics and wrestling? And should every top star use politics to help their careers? In the corporate world, you hear it referenced as networking. You got to build your network. You got to maintain your network. You got to grow your network. You got to nurture and cultivate and manifest your network. What is that? That's just code for politics. Life is politics. Work is politics. So I so stupid when somebody says, keep the politics out of wrestling or keep the politics out of sports or keep the politics out of that. Typically, it's because you don't agree with the viewpoint. Let's be real. If somebody says something that you agree with, by and large, you don't hear that same bitching and complaining. Um, but life is politics. It's all politics. It's absolutely what it is. And to think that it's not is just delusional and crazy. Um, so it's no surprise that you would certainly see it in wrestling. And it's just part of the territory. It's unfortunate. It shouldn't be like that, but that's exactly what the hell it is. That's life. Should every top star use politics to help their careers? Absolutely. Why wouldn't they? Because if they can't navigate that minefield and they can't navigate the politics, then why do I want them at the top representing my company? You know, so often, and especially in the corporate world, it's not about those with the best results and the best accomplishments that advance. It's those that are smart enough to strategically position themselves with the right people that will beat the table for them when they're not in the room. You know, it's, a, it's the old thing of, you know, achieve and then advertise. No, it's even better if you can get somebody to delegate the advertising of yourself to. Um, it's just a thing, though, is every top star needs to. They have to. Like, it's just reality. It's just natural because it is life. Uh, Disco Ben asks, what are your top three wrestling memories? Top three wrestling memories of all time. Like, there's a lot. Like, many years ago, before 2007, let's say, I probably would have said WrestleMania 20. And the finish to WrestleMania 20 would have been one of those three. But I really can't say that now. Could have said any number of things involving Hogan, but that's been tainted, so I can't even really say that anymore. Um, I would say the Hall of Fame weekend in 2012 with the old off the rope show and being able to hang out with Road Warrior Animal all weekend, I would go to my grave and that's one of my not only greatest wrestling memories, but one of my greatest memories of life in general. Uh, Mark Henry beating Randy Orton in 2011 to win the World Heavyweight Championship, like that was that was a, such a fun time, even if the product wasn't always great. But that was the, the, the comeuppance of the Smokey character. And it had been a month's progression to that moment. And get that payoff at Night of Champions 2011. And that was fantastic. Um, that's two. Would be the third. Huh. I don't know, it's hard to like differentiate because like I said, I had to take out a couple of other qualifiers. 
I'm not really sure. Like, maybe it's just me putting too much pressure on myself to not name something because I just want to say, oh, you said top three. Like, I probably could name something, but I don't think it makes sense to do so. Um, Dave G asked, what, are, what were the three greatest years of wrestling for you? For me personally, individually, great question. Um, I kind of put 2011 and 2012 together as one, you know, one year, even though it was two years, uh, with the Off the Rope Show stuff and all the things we were able to do during that time and how much fun that time was, even and especially because of that time, the product absolutely sucking. Um, that's the peak. That's the top. Nothing will ever, ever touch it. Ever. Ever. Um, I'll eliminate stuff from the Hogan era because admittedly I was, you know, young. So you didn't have as much of it in terms of wrestling overall that I would see on TV. Um, I would say other favorite years, 97 is always at the top of my list because of, you know, WWE and WCW and ECW and all the things those three companies were doing that year. And especially again, when I point to WWE and you could talk about just the change of the dynamic of the culture of the product from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. And then probably 98 as well. I could go with 98. Um, you know, those would be blocks of time that I think of. But like I said, to me, like, wrestling is one of those things that it's always better enjoyed with friends. And like out here now, I don't have any friends. So I don't watch with anybody. And I think in some ways that certainly has impacted my ability to enjoy the product overall or have fun coming on here and doing reviews and videos and so forth. Um, but it, it, again, just the experience is not the same and it certainly has impacted this channel. Um, so yeah, it will always be 2011, 2012 will be the best. The best, period. Uh, Aperv Shankar asks, Rock announced that the XFL will be back in 2022. Where do you see it going this time around? Also, do you think he made a wrong business, a wrong move business-wise by getting political and alienating a large chunk of football viewers who also coincide to be hardcore Trump supporters? You know, to, to your second point, maybe, but will it even matter? And it's like, here's the thing, like, I understand it, it, we got in such a hyper-politicized environment like there. I, I certainly see people that, you know, it surprises me when I see them express Trump support or something like that. And it's like, oh, that's disappointing. Oh, that doesn't make sense to me. Oh, that's stupid. That doesn't automatically mean I want to cancel them or give up everything. And I'm like, come on, man. We should be better than that. We're not, but we should be better than that. Um, he's the rock, so he'll be able to absorb something like that. And I don't think it's going to hurt him that much. Uh, where do I see it going this time around? It's failed twice already. Why would this time be any different? Like I would really need to be able to see it. Granted, 2022 is a long time away and we don't know what's coming. We, we can't even figure out what's going on one day to the next in freaking 2020, let alone think about 2022. Um, I'd have to see something from a business model standpoint, from an a strategy standpoint that would lead me to believe that this would be any different than the first two ultimately failed ventures. Now you can blame the failure of the second venture on COVID and that certainly is valid. But who's to say in 2022, you're not still dealing with COVID or something else related to COVID or some other type of issue or thing. Who knows? Who freaking knows at this point? The answer is nobody. So um, we'll be very interested to see how that comes. I thought it was really weird that they kind of bought into it. Maybe it's one of those gamble because you buy incredibly low like you got 15 million dollars to f off you know if you're thinking about it you know we got the potential here of look invested 15 million dollars invest some more and if this pays off then it could pays off tens if not hundreds of times more i get it it's it's worth the risk from Dwayne's standpoint certainly um so it looks like here we're about 15 minutes in we got a bunch of questions left so what i'm going to do is this was part one of the weekly q a I'm going to upload part two soon after you've watched this one. So make sure you check out that one as well. Going to get ready to record part two. So see you then.